What's up guys, Tea Party Percy here and welcome back to a new guide. This time I'm gonna explain you guys everything you need to know about the tier 4 Guardian Raid gear. How to craft it, how to enchant it and how to min max it and where to get the stuffs you need to do so. But before we start I'm gonna warn you guys, once you reach tier 4 Guardian Raid, a lot of stuff will change. It's gonna get really grindy. Once again this is an MMO. And at a certain stage, MMO always will have grind. Either you grind level by killing millions of mobs or the same dungeon raid to get the right gear dropped for your class. Or you have to, like in Lost Ark, grind guardians to get the materials you need to enchant your gear. Depends on you what you prefer. Some guys prefer to grind millions of mobs and some guys prefer to grind dungeons or raids. So now back to the topic. Before tier 4 guardian raid, you most likely had mixed gear, which means you had some pieces of life skill gear, island gear or chaos dungeon gear mixed up. But starting from guardian raid tier 4, you have to go for full guardian raid gear. You will have this gear for weeks, which means you can also min max it. Now, let me explain you first how to craft and upgrade tier 4 guardian raid gear. Similar to the previous Guardian Raid tiers, the first Guardian of the tier 4 Guardian Raid gear, sorry, Guardian Raid tier, is Armor Nakrashena. This one will drop you mats which you need to craft the base gear. So you can craft with the mats you get from the first Guardian of tier 4, the Nakrashena, the head, the shoulder, gloves, pants, chest, and the weapon. Bard is the only class which has an exception there. You can skip the first weapon which you can craft with Nakrashena's materials. But as a DPS, you pretty much have to go for this weapon. So once you have all those mats gathered and crafted the base gear, of course the full gear, then you can move on to the next guardian and try to upgrade the gear. To make it short, the first guardian, which is Armored Nakrashena, will give you the mats you need to craft the base gear. The second guardian will give you the mats to upgrade the gear to one and then to the second star. Third guardian, which is the Halgaia, actually the Frost Gaia, will give you the mats to upgrade your gear from two to four star. And the last guardian, the Lion, I forgot the right name. I mean, you know what I mean with Lion, right? That one will give you the mats you need to finally enchant your gear to five star. Once you have done that, you should be able to do the weekly raids. Again, the exception which I mentioned earlier, which is the weapon, you will craft as a DPS as mentioned first, the normal weapon from Nakrashena, but once you reach the second garden, which is the fox, with the mats from the fox, you can craft the thunder element weapon. This weapon can't be enchanted, it will be forced uh, five star, but the good thing about this weapon is you can keep it until you go to the weekly raids. And as a bard, you can skip the first weapon, and once you reach the second guardian raid, you can craft the thunder weapon without wasting mats on the first. Finally, we can talk about min maxing. I will explain what you can min max on the guardian raid gear and where to get the crucial mats you need to do so. But one thing is needed for everything, which is shilling. You should save a lot of shilling and if needed, you should also convert gold into shilling by the traveling merchant. The first thing which you can min max on your gear, also the easiest thing to min max, is rerolling substats. By the NPC with the sword icon and you know the circle, you can reroll your substats. I rerolled already all the substats which I need. Most of the time you should focus on two or three substats depending on which class you play. You need shilling to reroll their substats and a lot of luck. Depending on how lucky you are, maybe you don't need that much shilling at all. As you can see, I focused on critical substat and agility. Again, it is not the case for all the class, so if you have a different class, you have to focus on the substats which you need for your class. The second thing which you should min-max is the abilities on your gear. Once you enchant your gear to one star or to three star, you're gonna unlock ability boost on your gear. 
The Thunder Element weapon is 5 star already, so I can reroll or choose 2 ability boosts. Depending on which abilities you use on your Guardian Raid, you should reroll the abilities until you get the right abilities boosted. They can either boost the damage or lower the cooldown of those abilities. If you press on the magnifying glass, you can see which abilities can be boosted on this gear or on this slot. It is different depending on which gear you want to boost. So not all the abilities which can get boosted here on this weapon will help you because of course you won't use everything in this in this list. To reroll abilities, you need of course shilling and the hammer tier 2. This one is actually pretty easy to get and you don't need that many of those hammers so there's no need I think to explain where to get. You can get by doing dailies, um, a lot of side missions and just random drops. Again it's not that hard to get. As you can see I have all the abilities I need and I have still 237 of those left. Now brace yourself. We finally arrived to the hardest part of min-maxing. Which are the rune slots and the runes? First, you should know that there are four different color of runes. Red runes, which can increase some of your combat stats. Blue runes, which can increase damage against a certain type of enemies. Green runes, which decreases the damage you take from certain elements. And purple runes, which can make you immune to certain status effects. You should also know that there are two different rune slots. The normal and the amplified one. As you can see on this gear part here, I have two amplified slots which you can see because the edges are highlighted the same color and one not amplified one. The difference between an amplified slot and a non amplified slot is crucial and very important. First of all, it's hard to get the amplified slot so you have to be lucky. But if you put a rune into an amplified slot, it's gonna double the effect which you get. This rune, for example, increases my fire resistance by 20%, but because of this slot is amplified, I'm gonna get 40% resistance to fire. If I just put it in a green normal rune slot, I will only get 20%. And guess what? We need those amplified slots. And this can eat millions of shillings if you are not lucky enough, like I am. If you didn't interact with this NPC yet, the left menu is to slot runes in rune slots and the right one is the one you need to do to get the amplified slots is reroll certain rune slots. So what you're gonna do is reroll again and again and again until you get the rune slot setting or the rune slot combination you want. Here I have or an example or actually a guide to which rune slots you have to have or which amplified you should have on your gear. You should always have two amplified and one normal purple slot. As you can see I have already one amplified here, another amplified one here and a normal one here. A tip here, if you need a certain normal rune slot like the green one layer, I'm gonna explain it soon, go for the weapon because the weapon is the Ex most expensive one to reroll, so you should get the normal green and the normal purple here. So, back to the runes which you need, or the rune slots which you need, you need one amplified green and one normal green. Because the cap for damage resistance against a certain element is 60%, and you do the math, 20% in an amplified slot equals 40% and one normal equals in total 60% which is the cap. You will change the runes in the green and purple slots depending on the current guardian you fight. So for example I am currently at the flame fox yoho and of course it's fire guardian so I need to have 60% fire resistance which I have and 100% immunity to burn. But it's not impossible to clear the fox without burn immunity, but just a lot harder. When once again, if I move to the next guardian, which will be the Frost Gaia, I would have to change my burn resistance runes to movement speed reduction resistance and my fire element resistance to water element resistant runes. The first Guardian Nakroshena needs Thunder Resistance Runes and Paralyzed Immunity 
and the last guardian as far as i know needs earth element resistant runes and earthquake res immunity what about the rest of the runes i mean if you have two amplified purple one normal purple one amplified green and one normal green you have still a lot of slots left okay now let me explain what you have to do with those rune slots the rest should be either red or blue amplified slots in the red amplified slots you can put base damage increase which will help you to deal more damage and everything outside guardian raid so it's just a base damage increase it will work on every mob but again the specific boost which you get from blue runes is stronger so as long as you fight the certain type so at the end if you focus on guardian raids you shouldn't go as a dps for the red amplified runes you should go for the blue amplified runes and except the purple and green slots you should have only blue amplified rune slot and the rune which you should put in the blue amplified slot is the beast damage increase why because three out of the four guardians from the last guardian raid are beasts the only exceptions again are the bards as a bard of course you need the purple and the green slots as mentioned earlier but instead of going for blue slots only like the dps guys you should go for the red amplified slots only you don't need the blue amplified slots at all you should put in the red amplified slots hp red runes hp gonna make your shields stronger okay now to re-roll those slots you will need the blue tiers those tiers can be obtained from dailies, some normal quests, but also by grinding the dungeon on the Warpolgis Island. This island is close to Rohendel, so it's not that far. And you just need to go there and grind the dungeon in the easiest difficulty. Another way to get those tiers is just diving. There is a chance that you can get those things by diving. And of course, you will need tons of shillings. Some guys I know wasted already, okay it's not wasted but they are just unlucky. They had to use more than 5 million shilling to get the rune slots, especially the amplified rune slots they need. If you are lucky you can have it in less than 1 or 2 million. The last thing you need to know are where to get those runes actually. So you can get the tier 2 runes from dailies by exchanging guardian raid drops at the NPC close to the billboard. So if you look at a major city, you will see always the Guardian Raid billboard and close to it, you can find the two NPCs and one of them exchanges parts, which you get from Guardian Raids for a ring, a mark, and then the ring you can exchange for rune boxes. But if you need a certain color rune and you don't want to farm, you know, the general rune box which can give you any color and you know, then the chance are low that you get a specific color, then I have some places where you can grind certain runes. For example, red runes can be farmed in the Walpurgis dungeon on hard mode. I explained earlier already this is the Walpurgis dungeon. The hard mode will give you red rune boxes. Blue rune box can be earned from or grinded from the dungeon close to Adatine. This one here, the X301 dungeon. If you go in there and do the dungeon, to enter the dungeon you need to do the quest here again and again. So once you finish the quest once, you will get a ticket and you can run the dungeon once. And if you do this dungeon, you will get blue runes or actually blue rune boxes. You have to do the dungeon hard mode for that. Green runes can be earned or grinded from scavenging treasure chest in the sea so you know treasure chest hunt skill on your boat or ship or you can get it from walpurgis dungeon normal mode again the same dungeons this is the most important dungeon for runes actually because you get the red runes in the hard mode the green runes in the normal mode and you get the tiers which you need to reroll any rune slots also in those dungeons and the last runes which you need are the purple runes. You can get those from diving or in the newly introduced island, which is down here. Wait a second, I think this one. There is also a dungeon which gives you box for purple runes. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope I could help you a little bit 
to avoid mistakes and get your stuff min max a little bit faster if you liked it give this video a like and if you have any questions feel free to ask down below in the comments or ask me in the discords and sorry for the small fuck ups i did i'm a little bit in a hurry as always you know today is super bowl i don't want to miss it i want to join my friends and watch it together with them so i have to hurry and um, again thanks for all your support guys sorry that i couldn't post any guides in the last few weeks i was kind of a little bit ill but now i'm back and as soon as i have some new stuff to explain or garden rates i will make guides for it you can check out my previous garden rate guides or i made actually videos while i was explaining and doing the done uh, garden rate and explained the move sets and how to avoid it and so on so just check it out also we are recruiting currently new members for the tea party guild you know in a few weeks actually less than two weeks we will get the guild content and we recruit new members who are around tier 3 guardian raid so that we can prepare for the new guardian raid so if you want to join us just join the discord tag my name write your item level and your class and then i will message you back anyways Thanks guys for watching and see you guys in the next video, your Tea Party Percy.